Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here. New brewery time in the form of Triptych Brewing. This be their another peculiar point in time. Yeah, never had anything from Triptych before. This comes courtesy of Phil from Illinois. Thank you very much. He sent me off a box of homebrew. Threw in some other beers and this be one of them. I'm not gonna lie to you. I am very, very excited for this beer because what is this beer? A barrel-aged barley wine, style, you know, condition on whole bean intelligentsia coffee. Coffee barley wine. Bourbon barrel-aged coffee barley wine. I can't tell you the last time I had a bourbon barrel-aged barley wine. Actually, no, I could probably remember that, but a coffee barley wine barrel-aged? I, I couldn't tell you. So when I saw this, I got very, very odd bothered. It took all bits and parts of me not to review this last night um but we're doing it now we're doing it the next day here we go uh like i said another peculiar point in time a barrel aged barley wine style ale a condition on whole bean intelligentsia coffee from trip Titch brewing i've heard of them never had anything from them before uh and it's also it says condition on umbarana wood which i dig because it gives me this cool cinnamon vibes then age umber barrels and condition on the whole coffee bean 16.6 percent alcohol by volume so it's session beer um and it says here for best quality keep cold and drink soon my camera's flashing i don't know why um they're out of Savoy, Illinois. It just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Savoy, Illinois. Um, and that'd be that. It's got this cool kind of like cathedral kind of background um, with the name that another peculiar point in time very much kind of like um, uh, give me Elliot vibes. <laughs> the band Elliot, if you don't know who that is, I don't know to tell you. The Hiss. More often than not, the Hiss is going to tell you. I think this beer is going to be fantastic. There's no date on this, so I assume this is relatively fresh. Give it to me, baby. That's looking like the goods. That is looking like the goods. Where's my little cappy things? I kind of want to see if any carbonation I have in these suckers. Uh, we'll use this one. Okay. Mm. Okay. Um, label-wise, I just, I like it. I like when people use, like, photography in the background in a certain way. This has kind of, like, the way they use, like, the script here and all that stuff. It very much looks like, kind of, almost like a wedding invitation. Which kind of bothers me, being as a graphic designer and working at a print shop for quite some time. I don't work in that aspect anymore. Uh, but it, it, something about this, it's, it's tastefully done, and I do dig the design. And I actually like their, I mean, a trip titch, they're talking about water barley and hops they're kind of i think they're doing the trifecta that's where they get their name and something about the name triptych triptych i like saying it so it went flat because i was not talking i was talking too much i give this a while you get a little bit of a head back so that's always quite nice and honestly does it look like barley wine not so much <laughs> does it look like barrel aged barrel aged barley wine sure uh does it look dark yes so it looks more stout than barley wine, but it has me intrigued. Let's put it that way. So dark, uh, like I, how I like my coffee colored head, if you can see that, and just just rich dark vibes to it. Even holding up the light, you don't get much uh, much through. Let's even get a nose. God damn. <clears throat> This is the kind of beer you want to huff. Like I'm, I'm gonna drink it. I'm gonna drink the crap out of this beer. But that nose is so great. There's so much going on here. It is barley wine through and through, but it is rich, deep, and dense. Man, that Ambarana wood is coming through on this sucker with hair on fire. This, but it works in this beer. You're talking about a 16.6 percent beer. You know, you're talking about getting up there as far as that cooning, as far as that brewery level. That, um, <clears throat> clear my throat, <clears> throat> of ABV. 
that not a lot of breweries tip to. A couple breweries do it, you know what I mean? But not a lot of them get that big, but you have this hair on fire beer. So I think you need this hair on fire kind of presence when it comes to all the bits and pieces going on it, and you're getting it here. If anything, the coffee's present, but I think that Amberana would bring that cinnamon-esque kind of vibe to it, because it's not just straight cinnamon, but that's how it comes off to me in the best way I could describe it. It's definitely omnipresent, because I think that flavor profile is quite striking. Um, the coffee's definitely there, but for me, it's just a skosh below that. But everything else is within, like, wavelength, you know what I mean, of everything else. You know, this, the, the malt portion of the show, the beer portion of the show is big, bold, and robust. Um, you know, the spirit portion of the show, this, this whiskey, this slash bourbon, comes through. Big cherry notes. <clears throat> aggressive hot but at the same time is it the beer that's hot or is it the whiskey is hot you know the thing's pushing 17 percent, so no shit sherlock it's gonna be a hot beer <clears throat> and just that level of dessertiness you get underneath everything and by dessertiness i mean the natural dessertiness you typically get from a really well done barley wine you know you're getting these figgy things daity figgy things in there you're getting this little bit of vanilla from that barrel a little bit of coconut from that barrel and then when you take that um barana wood in combination <clears throat> with that coffee there's a lot going on in this beer aromatically it's amazing it's absolutely top notch over the top just hair on fire beautifulness is that going to translate in the taste? Only one way to find out. Cheers, y'all. really is delicious. There is so much going on in this barley wine. <clears throat> yeah, there's so much going on here. Like, let's just break it down. We're going to take a sip and we're just going to make, keep it simple, stupid. We're just going to talk about what we're tasting. I'm trying not to get too far out in the weeds as far as me going kind of crazy on tangents and all that stuff. Mouthfeel. That's how I know it's a barley wine. You know, the flavor's there. All the things that you know about bar barrel-aged barley wine, all, sure, fine, they're there. But there's so much other stuff going on. It really is the mouthfeel that I think cements this for me. <clears throat> because it has this density but drinkability that I think only barley wine can can do at this ABV level, so it's spot on. <clears throat> the first thing that hits you outside of mouthfeel for me is that Ombrana wood. Again, it's this cool kind of cinnamon that isn't... <sighs> the best way I can describe Ombrana wood to somebody else, how I taste it, is it's like cinnamon. It's like the best parts of cinnamon, but it, it, mm. it's more, I wanna get this right. So cinnamon is a great flavor, but for me, it's very, okay, oh, I got it. Cinnamon for me is, hey, cinnamon. Like it's cinnamon drop. Like, if you're going to draw cinnamon as a peak, as a waveform, it is like this. Ambarana wood is like this to me. It rises relatively quickly, but has a longer plateau to it. To get this richer, more drawn-out kind of cinnamon experience, it's not as sharp. It's richer. It's not as... The peak isn't as high, but it, it just lasts longer. Um, you want to think about it, it is wood, so you want to think about it as an oak tannin in your beer, and the way the oak tannin kind of sits and just rests, and it's not like oak, and then gone. It kind of that, you know, what, whether, whatever it be, the tannin, the oak, vanilla from the oak, it very much has a longer sh kind of arc to it, and that's kind of the way ombrana wood works, and I think that's a super, super smart way 
to kind of talk uh, to use this wood in this kind of beer because everything else in this beer is a long play, is a long come, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And then it works really, really well because you get a beautiful mouthfeel that striking ombrana wood, and then you start getting the other parts of the beer. The coffee in here comes off a little green peppery. And not even green peppery. It's probably more like green fleshy. If you've, you know, aged coffee can be peppery. But you can have whole bean coffee that isn't ultra roasted. That has this greenness to it. It almost comes off. It's peppery light, but there's a little bit more kind of greeniness to it. A little bit more vegetalness to it. That's the way the coffee comes off for me. And it's not necessarily like the big portion of the show here. It's almost like a third player. A uh, barrel comes off very nice here, soft chocolate, copious amounts of vanilla and coconut in this sucker. Spirit is nice, present, not overly hot. The whole beer is like insanely creepily drinkable to the point where I'm uh, kind of like scared how drinkable it is. But it says it's the beer as a whole going from including that coffee, including the spirit, including the beer, including the Ambarana wood, it's all working collectively. It's all working in concert to make a really, really, really fun, fun, well-made barley wine. If I take this and I strip this down, or that's not the best way to rephrase that. If I take this and I put this up against a 94 Hardy or a... You know, Revolution Barley Wine. Barrel Barley Wine. Or a really well done aged JW Lee's, Old Stock, yada, yada, yada. Do I pick this beer over those? It's in that level. And I think that in and of itself, I could stop this review. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm lumping it in with those beers. I think that tells you what I think about this beer as far as taste-wise. <sighs> Do I do I do I do I pick this beer over those beers? I don't think so. I don't think so. Walk it back. I go into Super Mister Share Time at some place, and everybody has every single pastry stout and you know whatever stout from Florida, whatever, with all kinds of flavors, all kinds of adjuncts. I walk into that share and I bring a 94 Hardy or I mean a revolution maybe, but you know, some of those old guard things that I covet so well, do they move the needle at that place? I don't know. Maybe, maybe if there's somebody that knows and, and understands what I dig in beer, maybe if I bring this, I think it moves the needle. I think it does. I think and it, but here's the thing. I think if you give this to somebody who loves the old guard, I think they love it too. So I think this is a really cool beer and that it bridges a couple gaps and that, you know, it's like, it's very much a beer that I think old school barley wine, old school old ale, aged beer, give me a beer with 15 year barley wine aged um, on it. But there's also new money ticker, I gotta get the side project, Florida's cool kind of person that I think they dig this too. And that's a really, really, really cool trick to pull off. Best example of Ambarana wood in a beer. Hands down, without a doubt. Really cool barley wine. I think the base is fantastic. I would love to just try the base on its own without barreling. I would love to try this beer as just a barrel-aged version of itself. I think the coffee is fun in this beer. And it's kind of like, you know, part and parcel of the selling point of the beer, I think. They're very focusing on the, on the coffee. But I think it really is the beer being that solid the barrel aging being very solid and this ombre on wood really coming through as a stellar component in a beer because what you're getting here for the lack of a better term is a kind of like an, uh, an irish coffee stay with me um an irish coffee uh mixed drinky thing because that's a word um with like cinnamon you know it's like weird it's because it's like it's a coffee it's a it's a cinnamon coffee drink but in beer form, but absolutely 100% beer, too. It's not, like, so far removed that it's like, eh, it's kind of beer, but it's not. No, it's 100% beer, but it has these really, really cool flavors going on with it. This is one of the coolest beers I've had. Like, 
as of late. One of the better barley wines I've ever had? No. It's in the conversation, just not what Mount Rushmore says. One of the better barrel age, same conversation. One of the better adjunct barley wines, sure, fine, it's up there. One of the cooler beers, absolutely freaking lootly without a doubt it's so cool and what it's pulling off what it's trying to be and what it is you know it's just a really cool beer and honestly thank you very much phil for sending this off i would have never in a million years would have had this beer unless you sent it because i wouldn't have known about it and that's the thing you know phil phil reach out and he's like i want to sing some homebrew and i said that would be awesome i appreciate it I didn't say, hey, send me some other beers or whatever. He took it on his own accord to send beers. He just said, okay, here's a brewery that I dig. You might not have heard of them. I don't think you've reviewed anything of them have at it. That's the stuff I love discovering. You know, when people do overtly ask me, someone's like, I want to send you a beer mail. What do you want? I'm like, I want what I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I want what I've never heard of before. That's what I want. Not that I don't want, oh, I've heard of this beer. That would be great. I've heard of that beer. That's great. But I don't want it. I, I, it's like the breweries that you know and love, um, that people know and love, that your region knows and loves, that no one's ever had a chance to have. Those are the ones that really kind of intrigue me. Here we are. Yeah. Is this one of the better barley wines I've had as of late? 100% Mount Rushmore says. As of late, valued availability, or, uh, uh, no, let's retract. Barrel aged barley wine, yes. Adjunct barley wine, yes. Across the board. Uh, valued availability, no idea. That's where this becomes tricky. A 12 ounce bottle of barley wine with this much going on for it, I assume it has a steep price point. I assume. What would I be okay paying for a bottle of this? And this is not a slate at the brewery, it's not whatever. I really don't want to pay 10 bucks more than 10 bucks a bottle for this i really don't in a perfect world i'm getting a four pack of this for around the 30 buck range i'm guessing it might be a little bit more than that perfect world i'm talking about uh leave you with if you like what we like this if you like flavorful beer if you like flavorful dark beer barley wine stout stuff like that if you dig on the old school and you dig on the new school I don't see how you don't dig on this. I honestly just don't. It wouldn't compute. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Uh, Triptych, have you had their beers? I have. This one is the one I've had. Uh, I have one more from Triptych. It is a Goza or a Berliner. I think it's a Berliner. Maybe it might be a Goza. I don't know. It's a fruited one of those. I'm going to get into it. I want to do this one first. Have you had this beer? Have you had any of their beers? Have you been to the brewery? What's your favorite beer from Trip Ditch? Guess what? This is my favorite one. It might be my favorite one for a long time. <laughs> Just because it's that good of a beer. Anyway, all that fun stuff down there. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying good beer right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers, y'all.